Cash Dividends Basics Problem 2. Pair Inc. was incorporated on January 1st, year 1. Pair issued 6,000 shares of common stock and 700 shares of preferred stock on that date. The preferred stock is cumulative $100 par with a 13% dividend rate. Pair has not paid any dividends yet. In year 4, Pair had its first profitable year, and on November 1st, year 4, Pair had declared a total dividend of $66,000. What is the total amount that will be paid to preferred shareholders? A dividend problem. Dividend problems can be quite challenging. We're going to make it a lot simpler for you. So what is the total amount paid to preferred shareholders? Now remember, dividend questions, if you're not specifically told it's a stock dividend, assume to be cash dividend, and you'll see the dollar amounts. For example, year four pair had declared a total dividend of $66,000. That's cash. Another thing to note is that it asks for the total amount, not the amount per share. So keep that in mind. Now we're focusing on preferred shareholders. Could ask for preferred, could ask for common. Remember, if a um, corporation has preferred shareholders, they've also got common. Common is requirement. Preferred is preferred to common. So preferred is not necessarily required to have. Okay, let's go through the information. You see that Pear Inc. was incorporated January 1st, year one. Pear issued 6,000 shares of common stock, 700 shares of preferred on that date. We're just focusing on the um, preferred here so we can ignore the common. Of course, you could go through and calculate for the common as well, but I'm just going to focus on the preferred. I'll explain at the end how you could do the common and calculate that. Now, one thing to note, the preferred stock is, ding, 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 cumulative. Uh-oh, that makes it more challenging. And yes, it does, because you got to worry about arrears. The idea of cumulative preferred stock is if a dividends aren't required to be paid out. But if preferred stock is cumulative, you got to look to all the past years where if nothing was paid, then you have to take into account those past years where they should have been paid before common gets anything. That's how you do it. We call those in arrears. All right. So again, making it simple. The way we do this, the formula. Each year, and again, it's not required, the maximum amount that preferred shareholders can get when it comes to a dividend, not required to be paid out, but the max they can get. We're going to calculate that. And that's always where we start when it comes to cash dividends. We always start with the preferred shareholders. We start with the preferred and the common gets the residual. They get whatever is left over. That is an aspect of preferred. You have a preference with respect to getting dividends, liquidation, other things before common does. So we start with the preferred. And again, the way you want to do this, whether it's whether it's cumulative, non-cumulative, does not matter in this question. You want to start by calculating the the maximum amount that the preferred shareholders can get in total. In total. So we're told you're going to take the par value, which is $100 par. $100 par. That's where you start with. You start with the par amount. Par amount. Multiply that by the percentage. The percentage rate. The percentage dividend rate, which we're told is 13%. So we multiply that by 13%. Okay, we also need to multiply by the number of shares of preferred stock. So the number of shares of preferred stock, which if you look in the problem as I write this out, and go ahead and locate that, it's going to be 700. And I'll show you where I found it, right here. 700 shares of preferred, of preferred stock, right there. All right, so we can put 700. That is our calculation. You're always going to do that for cumulative or non-cumulative. You take the par amount for the preferred. So par for preferred, I should specify that. There's also a par for common as well. Uh-oh, don't want to mix those up because they could be different. Preferred is almost always a larger car, um, par amount. Usually costs more per share. To times the percentage rate for preferred stock. So the rate it pays. And you multiply that by the number of shares of preferred stock. We, multi we do this calculation, 100 times 13%, which is 0.13, times 700, we're going to get $9,100. That is the amount, the max amount of dividend for preferred shareholders each year. For preferred shareholders each year each year. So $9,100 is the amount. Now I'm going to take that amount because we're going to continue reading. That's why I'm starting to set it up. I'm not trying to jump the jump, jump, not trying to jump the gun here, but I'm setting it up because we're going to need that number. We're going to need that $9,100 per year maximum amount. Again, it's not required to be paid, but it's important because remember it's cumulative preferred stock. 
So Pear has not paid any dividends yet. And we're looking from January 1st. Now we're told in year four, Pear has its first profitable year. A lot of companies, they start off with losses and then either they end up just going out of business or they start making money, whichever one. So we have profitable year, first profitable year. And on November 1st, year four, Pear declares a total dividend of $66,000. That's a lot of money. So this is through year four, right? January 1st, year one, to year two, to year three, to year four. This is in November year four. So this is four years worth of cumulative payments. Technically, it's three. Technically, it's the three past years. Three past years for years one, two, and three. So it's that. That's, that is the, the arrears. We call those arrears. That's the in the past, what could have been paid if it was the max. And when it's cumulative, you do have to take into account arrears. And if there was some amount paid in the past, but didn't hit the max, you take, you basically, you basically take the difference between what was paid and what should have been paid. And we're also going to add the current year, $9,100. So basically it's 9,100 times four. But again, Three of those $9,100 are arrears or past, and one is the current year amount. So we do that calculation. We're going to get $36,400, and that is our answer. $36,400. Again, the question was asking is, how much does the preferred shareholders get? Now, to go one step further, again, we answered our question, how much in total are paid to preferred shareholders? What do common get? Common are going to get the remaining amount, the $66,000 minus the $36,400, which is going to be... $29,600, $29,600. So they're going to get a pretty sizable chunk as well, $29,600. But remember, prefer gets first. We do this calculation. We look at cumulative, then common gets whatever's left. So again, the answer here is $36,400, $36,400.